Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're taking a look at a Sigil of the Empty Throne deck which is one of the new cards added in the latest anthology expansion. A 5 man enchantment that says whenever we cast an enchantment spell create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. So unlike a card like Divine Visitation, Sigil actually is pretty good in multiples since we get to make an angel token for each copy of Sigil of the Empty Throne when we cast an enchantment spell, so we don't mind playing the full playset. And then the rest of the deck is pretty streamlined and looks a lot like my green-white constellation deck in standard, but of course now we get to play with Sigil of the Empty Throne, which is a great finisher, especially because we can also find it with Calyx's plus ability, and that's something the standard version really lacked, because we couldn't really find a great win condition with the plus one ability, so that's now solved. And then, uh, of course, we also get to play with Lenore Elves as a great one-mana accelerant, which lets us speed up the process of playing cards like Citas and Champion, which we want to get in play as soon as possible to draw extra cards whenever we play an enchantment. So let's take a look at the entire list. At one mana, we also have the full playset of Outside of Life's Bounty, which we can use to protect our creatures or enchantments by giving it uh, protection from a chosen color. So can definitely come in handy, especially the fact that it's just a one mana enchantment that we can play to trigger cards like Satessin Champion and Sigil, makes it very valuable, so we will often hold it until we deploy Champion or Sigil, so we're not going to play it out on turn one all that often. We've got our Lanner Elves to speed things up, as well as the full playset of Wolf Willow Haven, which does double duty as a way to ramp, but also as an enchantment to afterwards trigger Constellation and make Angels with Sigil. And then we also have the full playset of the Birth of Miletus, which along Side Lanner Elves and Wolf Willow Haven helps us ensure that we can cast all our spells in a timely fashion, despite only playing 22 lands so we don't flood out too badly. And then we have two copies of Baffling End. You could also play Seal Away instead of Baffling End. It's pretty close between the two, but uh, I like that Baffling End doesn't require the creature to be tapped before we can remove it, so it can also be a more proactive removal spell if we want to get rid of a blocker. And then the average converted mana costs in Historic are pretty low, so you usually don't need to remove too many expensive creatures in the format. And then, of course, we have more removal that can deal with those more expensive cards later. Then we've got our full playset of Satassin Champion, which is the main card draw engine in the deck alongside Calyx. And then the full playset of Banishing Light, which is also close between this or Prison Realm, which lets us cry one but can only get rid of creatures or planeswalkers. So Banishing Light is a bit more versatile there. And we also have two copies of Excellence Binding, which is very similar to Banishing Light, but has the added clause that your opponents can cast spells with the same name as the Exiled card, which can definitely come in handy against some combo decks or very focused uh, decks that rely on one specific card. And we also have the full playset of Calyx Destiny's Hand, which does a ton of work in this deck as a card draw engine with the plus one ability, and with 26 enchantments total in the deck we have about a 90% hit rate with Calyx's plus one which is a pretty good number and then the minus three can be used as removal we can often target a wolf willow haven or a banishing light that's in play that the opponent won't be able to get rid of all that easily although we do have to be careful nowadays with ghost quarter being in the format which can destroy the land that's enchanted with wolf willow haven so if you suspect any ghost quarters you might be better off targeting a different enchantment with the minus ability and then the minus seven doesn't come up a whole lot but can also potentially help you return a bunch of enchantments from the graveyard. And then finally we've got our four copies of Sigil of the Empty Throne, which is the main win condition in the deck, and two copies of Elspeth Conquers Death as yet another removal spell. The upside here over Binding and Banishing Light is that even if the opponent removes the Conquers Death, they won't get back their Exile permanent, and that's another advantage of uh, Baffling Ants over Sealway, is that if they remove the Baffling Ant, they'll just get a 3-3 Dino instead of a potentially scarier card that we exiled in the first place. And then on the third chapter we can also return a creature or planeswalker, which is great in combination with our champion, Calyx, and even the Elsaid. Although important to point out is that Sigil of the Empty Throne triggers on cast, whereas a Dustin Champion draws a card when an enchantment enters a battlefield. So usually you prefer the effect on Sigil of the Empty Throne, so if you're up against a counter spell deck, even if they counter your enchantment you still get the angel. But in the case of Elspeth Conquers Death returning an Alsaid from the graveyard to the battlefield, it will draw a card with Satessin Champion, whereas it will not make an Angel token with the Sigil. So that's just a small interaction to keep in mind. 
And then a mana base, very straightforward, no need for fancy lands, since our deck is plenty enough uh, powerful if it gets to do its thing. So we've got 7 plains, 7 forests, 4 sun petal groves, and 4 temple gardens, so 11 untapped green sources total, which is what we want for the Lunar Elves, but still plenty of white sources to help us cast the Sigil, which is double white, as well as the Birth, of course, helping us find the plains, which can help us there as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. On the play, with uh, decent hands, Birth can find land 3, probably gonna hold Alsaid until after we play Champion at least, maybe until after we play Sigil. Could still play the Elf and keep Birth as a trigger for Champion, but if the Elf gets removed, we're going to be a little bit behind on mana. It's kind of close. I guess I'll still play the Elf. Up against Mardu, featuring Hero Precinct 1. So I could play Champion right now, although then if it gets removed... I'm starting to fall behind, so I think I would rather develop my mana first. And then next turn I could already play Sigil with a lands. Sigil into Allsade is pretty appealing. Judith, alright, so... Mardu and Divas, how the deck is sometimes referred to. And there's a lance. Yeah, let's uh, sigil it up and make our first angel. These Judith death triggers are gonna be pretty scary since we have a lot of one toughness creatures but at least we got our expensive enchantment in play. Now, of course, Mardu could have a bunch of answers to enchantments. Mortify comes to mind, which would fit into the deck. It's gonna be Bedevil on the Angel. Um, do I want to trade here? Probably not keep this to protect the champion. Although, I'm somewhat likely to play Calyx first. Ooh, Baffling End is nice. Now it's a pretty easy play. And probably get rid of Judith before getting rid of Hero. Even though they could have another one in hand. And we've got the Alcid ability at the ready too. And this is where we start snowballing card advantage and angel tokens. They've got their own Angel, although this one is pretty susceptible to Exile based removal. And Conqueror's Death seems like a pretty good answer here. And my opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hands... okay. Hopefully we can draw into more uh, enchantments along the way. Would have been a little bit better if one of these elves were lands, but uh, definitely want to have one on turn one. Could be the mono white life gain deck, in which case we've got plenty of answers to Heliods. Next turn I can binding the Pride Mates. Unless something scarier shows up. And there's Heliots. Well, that's an easy block. Yeah, let's probably still binding the Pride Mates. And Calyx can maybe get rid of Heliods. Did 
that's not too bad. Another champion. So we've got a few approaches here. You can play a second champion, play elves. Don't hate that, and then just draw a million cards next turn. Could have also played Haven into champion, draw one card. Which could have been fine too. I'll stay back for now. Happy playing defense since our late game's looking pretty unbeatable. Not a landing. No great attacks for them, and yeah, opponent packs it in. We were definitely gonna go off next turn, drawing plenty of cards and eventually swarming them with angel tokens. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Facing what looks like a control deck. Alright, nice. Turn 1 Lander Elves. Definitely makes this hand a lot more exciting as we can play champion on turn 2. And then next turn I can play both copies of Wolf Hollow Haven or Haven into Birth. Or a uh, birth into haven. We'll see. It's gonna be Narset. Alright, Narset's a little annoying. As that will prevent us drawing cards with the Citizen Champion. So I guess what I'll do is just play one haven and kill Narset. And take it from there. So do I want to play Birth or do I want to play Haven? I could play both, but I kind of want to make sure I kill Narset with the Lenor Elves attack. So I guess we'll play Haven for now. We'll just finish off Narset. The reason to potentially still play two enchantments is if they have Teferi Bouncing Champion. We want to have more mana so we can replay champion more easily. But getting rid of Narset is kind of nice too. Alright, so probably go Haven into Kallax. Don't necessarily want to play another champion in case of a sweeper next turn. So we'll just play Kallax. Hopefully no spell pierces. Find Sigil. The patterned future appears before. Now we don't have double white yet. So that's one of the disadvantages of not playing birth earlier. Opponent keeps up four mana. Gotta be mindful of uh, Settle the Wreckage in this format too. Step one, probably just plus with Calyx. And... Probably go for the banishing lights. The stars will light our way. Could play champion and then still have three mana left over. Yeah, I guess that's decent. And if they want to counter this, so be it. But we'll make sure we get plenty of value from these citizen champions in case there's a sweeper next turn. And even if this gets countered, I could still play Alsaid and draw two. They will sabotage my Haven. So it's probably worth it to uh, draw my two cards before the sweeper hits next turn. Now I still didn't play Birth, so I still won't necessarily have double whites for the Sigil, but uh, that worked out. Smash for four. Likely gonna get my board swept next turn. As we see Shatter the Sky go to the graveyard, so they definitely have another one in hand. But I will get to draw a card from Champion being in play. And we can rebuild with all these cards in hand. So no real need to sang Alsaid. Alright. 
All right, so opponent could flip Ascanta next turn, which I want to prevent. So I'll probably minus Calyx and play Sigil this turn. Destiny draws me. Cannot escape the bonds of fate. And then play Birth to make our first Angel. And our opponent packs it in, just too far behind, too much value. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. No ramp, couple too many expensive cards. This is a mulligan. Well, this is also a mulligan. This is better. And probably keep baffling and birth. All right, can we win on a multi-five? Seems to be up against the Mono White Life Gain deck. Sarah Ascendance. Don't really want to let them flip the landing next turn if I can avoid it, so let's Baffling End. Probably get rid of the Ascendance. And Linden's pretty scary too. Could play Calyx next turn to exile something else. We'll get a wall which can block Linden. But now the Adanto does transform. Opponent passes, Ixon's Binding could be a nice tool. So, don't necessarily want to minus Calyx and have it die to the Hawk. Opponent can also make a token end of turn. Could just Binding the Linden. I guess that's fine for now. And then I can maybe start plussing with Calyx. Opponent is going to go wide with tokens, so we'll need to find our Sigil, Sadassan Champion. Yeah, opponent may be playing around a sweeper here, not wanting to commit anything else, who knows. But now is a good time to play Calyx and Plus, I think. Find a banishing lights. Look skyward and receive the gifts of Not the best answers to a bunch of tokens. I'm happy if they attack Calyx. Soaks up a bit of damage, can still plus next turn and draw an extra card essentially. Yeah, not sure what our opponent's doing here, playing so passively. Uh, probably take the Conqueror's Death, which can get back Calyx eventually. I am blessed by Nyx. So our opponent will make another token end of turn. So technically if I go Banishing Light to Hawk, play Alsaid, I could keep Calyx alive for an extra turn. So I guess we'll do that. Everyone at Calyx.
Another Legion's Landing, alright. More Banishing Lights. That's a miss. At least we put a bunch of bad cards on the bottom. The only good non-enchantment uh, cards at this point would be more Calyx and Satessan Champions. So what do I do? Two blockers. Opponent's gonna have three attackers. Pass my walls. So even if I get rid of one token, Calyx still dies. Could play this just to kind of get the third chapter going eventually. But I won't be exiling anything with the first chapter. Might still be worth it since I don't have anything else going on. And we've got double banishing lights. So yeah, we'll try it. So no real reason to block here, since Galax is going to die anyway. Did my opponent forget to make a token end of turn, perhaps? No real reason to play it all set out. Just going to wait in case we find a Satessan Champion or a Sigil. Maybe their hand is all Lindens. Could be. So we'll get back Calyx end of turn. Unless they Tribunal it. Ah, there's a champion though. Probably Banishing Light to Tribunal. Which will also trigger champion once more. And Johnny Sprite Mate shows up. I'll say to protect. So pretty beefy Pride Mates. Luckily these walls are artifacts, so the Alsate can give protection from artifacts to get the Ajani Pride Mate through. So usually want to start with the cheapest enchantments possible, although both Alsate and the Haven are essentially one mana. More Havens. And then I'll probably Banishing Light, the Pride Mate, forcing the Alcids to be used here. And then I could keep up my own Alcid or I could play Lunar Elves. I think I'll keep up all said. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up at 55 life, just too far behind our resources. We were gonna get back Calyx. We had Sigil now too to start making angels. So yeah, we won on a multi five. A bit of a weird game. Opponent didn't commit much to the board early on, but maybe they had a bunch of Lindens that they couldn't cast, or a bunch of removal that didn't line up properly. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand's not super exciting. No Sigil, no Calyx, no Satessan Champion. But it is technically functional. But it does rely pretty heavily on drawing one of those cards. You know what, I think I'm gonna try and find uh, better hands. And yeah, this definitely counts. Got to keep the lands, got to keep champion. Probably want to keep Alsaid as a cheap enchantment to play after we play champion. 
So probably just get rid of the binding since Calyx is usually just a better binding. There's Sigil. Still gonna hold on to the Alsade, especially if we are gonna miss a land drop. We'll need it for the card draw. Opponent on Monorats. Well, sadly, I might have to wait and then play Champion on turn 4 alongside Alsade, because they have so many 3 damage burn spells that can kill this. Now, of course, I could keep up that instant speed burn spell, which would still kill it, but at least I'll get to draw 1 card. They could still have a Wizard Slining, because this is indeed a Wizard. So hopefully it's just a shock. Alright, that happens. Could see two burn spells take out a champion next turn, but at least we'll uh, make our opponent spend a bunch of resources trying to get rid of it. And we got to draw at least one card. And next turn we could slam Sigil. I'm fine trading Alsit for the Pyromancer, I think. Could also save it to protect an Angel later, which is definitely something that could come up. But it will be taking quite a bit of damage from the Pyromancer in the meantime. Vanishing Light is also quite solid. At 14 I can probably afford to take a turn off with Sigil, otherwise I could Banishing Light and Hold's Birth to play after Sigil. Don't have an enchantment in play to minus Calyx. So I could regret it letting my opponent untap with a Steamkin, but I think I will take the risk just to get the Sigil in play. And hopefully they don't do anything too crazy. Torbrand's pretty crazy. Some down to eight. Could be that to a flurry of burn spells. Chain Whirler deals three to me. Alright, this might still be manageable. So this turn I get to Banishing Light Torbrand, play Birth, make two angels. Could see pre combat Chain Whirler so that the uh, 3 3 first ranker can attack. Instead, it's gonna be Pyromancer put me to 3. Attack with both, force to block. Alright, opponent was holding on to that lightning strike. Well, it's too bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not an incredible hand, could end up being a little bit short on mana, but I'll give it a try. Probably still gonna hold all sides until after the sigil. Well, maybe I'll play it now, just to hold off Soul Warden and other potential one drops. Now let's just play tapped. So this is a black-white life gain deck. Fair enough. Do I still want to play the Haven first? Yeah, I'm probably gonna save Baffling End for like an Aerialist or some other scary creature. Usually try and enchant basic lands with Haven in case of Field of Ruin. Although most decks have moved to Ghost Corridor now. Right. Heliots can be answered by a lot of uh, different removal spells in our deck, although we'll have to wait for it to become a creature to baffling end it. For now, I think just land and pass. 
The Soul Warden by itself is not super threatening. Angel Vitality on the other hand. I definitely don't mind uh, removing here and Satassin Champion's a good draw alongside it. So don't mind this sequence. And then next turn we could go Sigil plus Alcid. Opponent will get a bunch of Soul Warden triggers from my Angels, but hopefully we'll find some answers with the champion draws. Not a baffling ends, not bad. Take six. And a Seraph of the Scales. Well, we've seen that one before today. And it didn't end well for them. So. I might honestly want a Baffling and a Soul Warden before the Angel of Vitality. Calyx can get rid of another creature too. Could also Calyx get rid of the Soul Warden and then play Baffling and getting rid of Angel so they don't get any triggers from the Soul Warden when I make an Angel. Could also be fine. And then we'll enchant, I guess, like a baffling end is fine. You are reckless, is the word. The the and then play Alcid. Can probably start attacking too. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand's a bit too much on the pricey side without any acceleration, so it's gonna be a mulligan for me. This is a little better. Still not an amazing hand, but we'll try it. Turn one Spectral Sailor. Are we gonna see Curious Obsession? If they do go for Curious Obsession and keep up one mana, I could Banishing Light uh, Obsession itself instead of the Sailor to play around Dive Down. It's gonna be a bunch of one drops. Yeah, let's Banishing Light, uh, Storm Tamer. Empire and Eagle, good target for the Ixalan's Binding. So it's uh, blue-white flyers. So no more Empire and Eagles for my opponents. Harshbringer, all right. Could potentially stop uh, Citizen Champion from drawing cards when we play the Alsaid. For now, I'm thinking just Calyx and Plus, as they won't be able to kill it in one attack step. And I do really want to find this card, Sigil. And then we just want to find some cheap enchantments that we can play alongside it to then uh, kind of dominate the skies. 
opponent deciding whether to go after our Planeswalker or go face. The cards I'm most concerned with here are probably Rally of Wings, giving all their flyers plus two plus two. Maybe Brazen Borrower can interact with my enchantments. Is this pain? Opponent passes. And Alsaid is perfect since I can go Sigil into Alsaid. Opponent could also be holding up counter spells for all I know. Not sure how their deck is configured exactly. But I think I'm still gonna go for the sigil here. I am blessed by Nix. And if it does get countered, we'll just play an elf. And our opponent explodes, can beat a string of 4 4 angels. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, solid hands. Kallax a nice card draw engine that we can ramp into here ahead of schedule. And then hopefully Kallax can find our sigil. Let's see what we're up against. Planes into Alsaid, alright. Faced a lot of these life gain decks today. Maybe this is more enchantment focused. I think I just go Haven into Haven. And then we can Baffling and the Pride Mate if we want to. So we can Calyx plus... Ooh, that's a miss. It's unfortunate. Another Pride Mates. And a Healer's Hawk, so no protection from the Allsade. The and there's our Sigil, perfect. So do I want to take a different approach now? Probably still just plus here. That's quite a selection. So let's see, five. There's no one mana enchantment I can get. Do we just get double sigil? Or do I get something cheap so next turn I can go banishing light plus something cheap? Now let's get double sigil. The stars will light our way. Doesn't really matter which one we play. Then we'll pass. Can jump with the Lenor Elves if we want to. Ah, Heliots can get answered by the Banishing Lights, although they still have the Alsaid. But now if I chump the Pride Mates, I will still be able to minus Calyx, as well as play Banishing Light potentially. Seems worth it. Or I can just block the Alsaid, I guess, lose Calyx, and then we'll be fine too. Got a lot of options. I think we'll do this. And our opponent does tap out once again, turns Heliot into a creature. So probably just play second Sigil, minus Calyx on Heliot himself. Could also go for the Pride Mate, technically. If they have another Heliot, I might regret minusing there. But I think overall it represents the most damage next turn between all the counters and the 5 damage. So... Enchant, probably the Baffling Ends. And now we just need to draw enchantments for the rest of the game and we'll be golden. Another Alsaid. And a Vanguard, right. The 
Pride Mate is going to get pretty big. But the Hawks at least uh, don't get to attack. Perfect. Play Baffling Ends. And our opponent's just gonna concede to that already. They didn't even see the full uh, potential of Sigil. Sweet. So yeah, we beat up on a lot of Mono White Life Gain decks. Definitely one of the more popular decks in the format, so... Nice to have a good matchup against it. The Gruul deck, I've also played a couple times with this deck. It didn't seem to be too much of an issue. So yeah, overall, haven't seen too many matchups that gave me trouble with this deck. So it seems to be pretty solid and overall has uh, pretty good matchups. I imagine combo decks are probably the worst matchup for the deck, especially spell-based combo decks that don't need to put a lot of permanence in play, that can just potentially kill you in a flurry of uh, instants and sorceries that you can't really interact with if you're not uh, fast enough to kill them. Although there's not too many of those decks around in Historic, so that's definitely a potential uh, hole in the metagame that you can exploit with a deck like this, which has a decent matchup against aggro, as well as a fine matchup against control with all the card advantage and difficult to interact with permanence. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.